Hello friends, this video on hydrogen part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So what is hydride gap? So if you see, these groups forms hydride, right? The group 1, group 2. And I told that uh, these groups also form hydride. This forms metallic hydrides. These forms covalent. And these I told forms interstitial. But out of these, Group 7, 8 and 9, these three groups, they don't form hydrides. So if you see there is a gap, these forms don't hydride, they don't form hydride. So there is a gap actually. So the, these forms hydrides, these forms hydride, these forms hydride, these forms hydride, almost all, all the metals, non-metals, these also don't form hydride, they are noble gas. But that is not in continuity, but if you see from here to here, if you go from here to here, hydrides, hydrides, they are forming hydrides. Suddenly we found three groups that don't form hydrides. Again, they we found groups forming hydrides. There's a gap here, right? Group 7, 8, 9 block of, of this D block, they don't form hydrides. And there is a gap and this gap is called hydride gap. Please note, group 7, 8, 9 don't form hydride. And that's why there's a discontinuity. Apart from that, you start from here, group 1 to group 17, all of these form hydrides. So there is a gap and we call it hydride gap. Let's take some examples. Do you expect the carbon hydrides of C and H2 N plus 2 form? You put N is equal to 1, you get CH4, right? So if you see CH4, it is electron deficient? No. Electron excess? No. It is electron precise. The question is, do we expect the carbon hydrides of this form to act as Lewis acid or base? So, and since it is electron precise, it won't act as acid or base. Why? Because it is electron precise. Correct? It won't act. Let's take another example. What do you understand by the term non chocometric hydrides? Do you expect this type of hydrides to be of formed by alkali metals? No. See, non stoichiometric is something I have X, H and you have some fractional number, for example, 1.2 or X, H, 1.9 or X, H, 2.7, something like that. So these kind of hydrides you get when you have some metals and that act as sponge, right? And they are normally transition metals actually. Transition metals act as sponge and in the sponge it has holes and in his holes hydrogen sits. Since hydrogen can sit more or less in this hole, there is no reaction as such between hydrogen and uh, transition metals. There is no reaction as such. There is no pure reaction. It's just that transition metals have some holes and hydrogen sits here. And in this hole, for example, uh, more hydrogen can sit, less hydrogen can sit depending on the temperature and pressure. So this value is not constant. This may be fractional, this may be real number, we don't know. Right? This value may change also. So they are called non stoichiometric because it is not in proportion. But when we talk about alkali metals, for example, sodium, when it reacts with hydrogen, sodium has one extra electron, hydrogen has one deficient, so one electron will get transferred, it will become Na plus, NH minus. So there's a complete transfer of electron, right, from sodium to hydrogen. So there is no question of a uh, few electrons or more electrons, always one complete transfer of electron, right? So it is never non stoichiometric Hope you understand, right? Because in this hydrogen reacts with sodium as such. So in this case, for example, I have some transition metal X and I had, let's suppose 100 transition metal X and only let's suppose 120 hydrogen atoms are filled in this gas. When you heat, heat it, let's suppose 10 atoms are gone, now I have 110 hydrogen atoms in this. So if you write the structure, it will become XH 1.2. Here it will become XH 1.1, correct? Because I have, let's suppose 10, 100 uh, atoms of X in, in a particular uh, small block of X transition metals and I have the holes in the holes I have filled 120 hydrogen atoms. So the formula will become XH 1.2 because there is no reaction actually, right? It's all just fitting in the hydrogen is just going and sitting inside this holes. And the next one, if you just heat this, 10 uh, hydrogen is gone, just evaporated, it just went out and you have only one 10 hydrogen. So in this case, the formula will become XH 1.1. So if you see, there's a difference. There's no reaction. There's just hydrogen sitting in inside there and the number of hydrogen that sits inside can vary. So the number can also vary and they can also be fractional because there's no reaction going on here. Correct? 
let's take one more example what do you expect uh, why, how do you expect the metallic hydrides to be useful for hydrogen storage so they told the metallic hydrides are like sponge it can take hydrogens in this right so hydrogen is absorbed so if you see the hydrogen is absorbed as hydrogen atoms because hydrogen atoms are very small in size right so due to more expand more hydrogen hydrogen inside this this thing the whole thing expands a little bit right because you're pumping in more and more hydrogen what happens is end of the day it expands a little bit right and it becomes a little stable unstable so if you heat this if you heat this so what will happen it will shrink and it will liberate hydrogen gas because the moment hydrogen ions come it forms hydrogen gas and gives energy also right so as hydrogen atom is stored here the moment you store more it expands but the moment you heat it a little bit it this the whole thing springs and hydrogen gas comes out and this gas is used as fuel correct so thus this transition metals right transition metals or their alloy can be used for hydrogen storage because we are talking about the metallic hydrides so if you see in this the question asks is how does the atomic hydrogen oxyhydrogen torch is used for cutting and bending purpose so if you see what happens is hydrogen the moment you pass electric high electricity it breaks into H atoms this is a molecule but and there is a heat required for this the energy required for this now it has a very short line span the moment that uh, extra force is gone it, it again combines to form H2 immediately 0.3 seconds very short lifetime and when it combines to form hydrogen molecule right it gives out energy it gives out energy it is negative it is very high it is a lot of heat there is a lot of heat right and this is used for cutting and building because this can melt this can melt iron so the question is among ns3h2 and hf which has the highest magnitude of hf bond so i know that hf bond depends on two things atomic size and electronegative and i know that less atomic size and more electronegativity favors hind one and let me write that less atomic size and high electro negativity favors favors h more correct correct so lesser is the atomic size higher is the electronegativity the more is the h mod so let's uh, in this case if you see we want to find the least atomic size which one has the least atomic size chlorine you compare fluorine oxygen and nitrogen nitrogen oxygen fluorine fluorine has the least size we talk about electronegativity fluorine again has the highest max electronegativity so in both cases fluorine is favored so we'll say that hf has highest hydrogen bond correct why because hydrogen bond is favored with um, small atomic size and higher electronegativity and in both cases fluorine comes out to be favorable so the question is saline hydrides are known to react with water to produce fire can co2 be used here for fire extinction so what are saline hydrides saline hydrides are my nah ch2 all these ionic hydrides so these are my saline and ionic hydrides so let's see the reaction when you have nah when you react with water this forms sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas similarly we have ch2 when it reacts with water it gives coh2 calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas now what happens if you add carbon dioxide Let, let's take nh in this reaction let's add carbon dioxide so what will happen 
so carbon dioxide will reduce will get reduced by metallic hydride it will become hcoo na so there will be reaction between this and this also so co2 will not be used see whatever co2 you are using that will be consumed here only it won't be useful to uh, stop the fire so in this case because we know for fire extinguisher we know generally use CO2 or we use water or sand. So in this case we, we can't use water because it reacts with water. We can't use CO2 because it reacts with CO2. We have to use sand. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.